This city is known for its nightlife. And since the days of the speakeasy, nightclubs have been the way. From the Cotton Club, to the Latin Quarter, to the Copacabana, then came Studio 54. There was never a club like it, and there's never been one like it since. Today we have with us Mark Benneke from Studio 54. Welcome, Mark. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank, Thank you, Scott. You so much. Very welcome. And um, so tell me, how did, you, uh, how did you wind up at Studio 54? And I got, was introduced to Steve Rebell and pretty much immediately he asked me, he said, uh, what are you doing for the summer? And I'm like, it was April, nothing. He goes, how'd you like to work here? And I'm like, all right. And that's basically wow. how it happened. So this was a complete accident? Uh, yeah. That's fascinating because outside of Rubel and Schrager, you're yeah. probably the most recognizable face <laughs> from the most famous club that ever existed on the planet. I guess so. You know, people sometimes still stop me. What do you think was the the alchemy that that happened to be? I to think make uh, I think a lot of it had to do with you know the Vietnam War had just ended and people were looking to let their hair down. It was also the period you know before AIDS started. Yeah. Um, you know, it was that window between '77 and. 80 where you know people were just out to have a good time the village voice put it the best they said you can't reheat souffle and that's really that's really what it is and that's well put yeah I have a very romanticized view of New York I try as much as possible to live in the present but I really feel you know much of the soul of the city has been lost Every opposite was living on top of each other, you know, and I think that's that's what made it that's what made it so incredibly special. People weren't so afraid to interact with others. In my own life, I was in such a place that the downside of the city really, really didn't, you know, really didn't um, affect me that much. Like, for instance, I mean, we were aware of all the things, you know, like, you know, the burned out South Bronx. I mean, my experiences on the Lower East Side were fantastic. <laughs> You know, because I was probably with some really hot girl, right. you know, who, <laughs> you know, you know, who was living with four other girls in an apartment. They were paying two hundred dollars a month rent for stories about stepping over, you know, addicts in the stairway. All that stuff's true, you know. Right. But but when you're young and when you're in the, you know, when you're in this romanticized version of what's really going on, right. you know, you just it just kind of you go with it. I think it's lost um, in the in the the time from then till now. Right. It's, the disparity is so much greater now. You right. know, but you know, I felt, you know, New York, uh, when, when Giuliani became mayor, you know, and did a lot of good things, but the city has really changed, you know, starting with him, that change really started happening to what we become, what we are now. You can't, you can't get a real moment out of anybody unless you're really, truly friends with them. What has Studio 54 done for you? It opened a lot of doors, but I think because I was so young and naive, I also didn't realize that you had a lot of situations, many times, you know, where people, I had to learn the hard lesson of, you know, once you can't do something for someone, you know, they're not as, uh, they're, yeah. not, they're not as willing to, you know, pick up the phone for you. Yeah. You know, so that was a hard lesson to learn when I was really, really young. It's made me more, right away at a young age, more, aware and curious of the world in general, I think, because I met so many incredible and interesting people. So then, did you realize at that time, like, uh, the magnitude of what you were in the middle of? No, and I don't think anyone did. Uh, once after the first week, we knew we were working at a really hot club, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we got that part down, sort of right, and you know, but also, like I said before, you really don't think it's ever going to end. You know? Where your spot was 54. Yeah. I mean, it's often a, it was another a dark, planet. Yeah. you know, n there was, you know, you before that club opened, that's not a block you would yeah. really look to walk down probably yeah. at night. They were, taking a, they were taking a big chance. How did you operate? You know, what was involved when you, when you showed up for work? I showed up for work. There was a list that Myra put together, that's why we do a radio okay. show. Yeah. Time out. So you look at that list. Right, I look at that and list. you probably go, holy shit. There were, there were two ways to look at the list, honestly, because sometimes you would get the list and you really kind of wouldn't pay attention to it because there was a list and then there was like, I don't want to say a second list, but there was a list of like people, if you could let them in, if you could let them in, let them in, but you know, don't, you don't have to like go overboard about doing it. Right. And um, you know, I was very young and you know, kind of stupid and you know, I would do crazy things out Side, like you know rip the list up burn the list you have like a highlight reel of your times you know at the door like some no. the most memorable like these things jump out people trying to bribe me I think uh, uh, <laughs> I, I think five grand and uh, what is it five thousand dollars and five 
Well, you say tried to bribe. Yeah, did he, yeah, did, no, did the bribe? No, no. You turned well, down five thousand. Yes, I did. Yeah. Now you're really thinking I'm stupid, right? Well, I'm not saying stupid. I, I'd love to hear the reason why, though. Um, basically, because we weren't allowed to take uh, we weren't allowed to take uh, money, and 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 honestly, the person really would have stood out inside. Studio 54, in its own way, was a work of art, and you know, it's kind of asking somebody paint this way instead of that way, you know. And uh, you know, I for whatever crazy reason, I took pride, you know, in the job. It's like the stormy New York night out of this white limousine wearing all white chiffon <laughs> comes Farrah Fawcett. It was like this aura around her, so that was pretty. I mean, I, I, I still remember it like it was yesterday. It's just one of those things. Rod Stewart working the ropes. That was pretty good. <laughs> wow. Yeah, uh, Lily Tomlin uh, did the did the coat check one night. Uh, Grace Jones jumping out of the cake. Grease One, we did the premiere and um, we had to take, we got all, the, all these cars, and we had to take the cars out because the fire department came in and there was gas in the cars, and of course you can't have gas. So we, had, we, rolled, we rolled like about eight, seven or eight of these cars in, and then we had to roll them out and roll them back in. So that was a lot, that was a lot of fun. What about Steve Rebell? Well, I mean, Steve was amazing. I mean, he was kind of like a second, you know, father figure to me. I mean, he was always very kind. I mean, he was a genius with people. I mean, he could walk up to you and make you feel, you know, like he had known you for 10 years. He had a way with people whether, you know, whether he was interested in knowing them or not, he made you feel like he was your friend. I mean, he had the best touch for turning people away. He could talk to someone and turn them away and make them feel fairly okay about it. <laughs> and I, and God bless him, that is, you know, that's, that, some, that's, talent, a, right that's there. some talent. Whenever there was gonna be like a big night or there was a big uh, event going on, mm -hmm. the whole staff from, from a, a place would have to step up. Right. How do you do that every night? Yeah think that people were treated, you know, as celebrities but as people too, I think had a lot to do with it. Even from the beginning, we just, I feel like we just looked at it differently. Was it because you saw so much of it so often? Yeah, like, no, even, with, even when Andrew and I were doing Bar One in LA, I, I mean, I felt like it was wonderful and everything, but you know, I, I just wanted people to have a good time. I say that one of the reasons Myra and I are doing this show is so I can really find out what happened inside. Because <laughs> you know? I, was, I was outside, you know, most of the time. Okay, let's talk about the show. All right. Yeah. How did that come about? Because it's a great show. Well, about, uh, actually, six years ago or so, um, Scott Greenstein, who's the uh, chief creative officer of Sirius XM, um, approached me with the idea of doing a show based on 54. So I'm like, okay, I'll give it a shot. And the first couple of, um, you know, demo tapes that I did were pretty much a disaster. Um, <laughs> I said, well, I think the best way, if we're going to try to do this, the best way to kind of make it work is to find someone, you know, to work with me on it. So I actually thought of, thought of Myra, you know, of people that are still around and who would possibly be interested in it. We did one demo show, okay, you know, between the two of us, and then we just went right into it, and we've been learning since then. Well, we've learned so many interesting things that we didn't know, like Rollerina, for instance. Um, she said something that was just like, amazing to me. Roll Arena, for those who don't know, used to kind of dress up in like kind of semi-drag and kind of a, and kind of a... a Hold on. <laughs> semi-drag? Yeah. <laughs> what well, is that? I don't know. <laughs> That's the only way I could I'm sorry, describe that it. No, I know. semi <laughs> I mean, it's not, I guess it's not going all the way. I don't, I don't know. But she used to come in with kind of like a wedding dress on and like, and like a, like a kind of like a Cinderella crown and like a Cinderella kind of, um, you know, you know, that could wand. Be semi anything. Yeah, I right. guess. Yeah. Okay, semi drag. Right. right. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. But anyway, um, so, and she told me that because she works on Wall, she worked on Wall Street. Or he worked on Wall Street. He had like phone booths and, and special hiding places around New York where he would hide his costume, and that's how he would get get away of going to work. Because, and that and that so the people in his building didn't know. Yeah. And the, and that and the, obviously the people that he worked with, you know, back then, you know, couldn't know. You wow. know. So so he would hide his costume in like in like you know 
in like he said like in phone booths or like he would find That's little hysterical. little nooks and crannies around the city. Imagine being really drunk one night and going and make a phone call and you're like, oh my god, and you have no idea how bad it is. You think this is bad? It's yeah. a lot worse than you think. Yeah. New York City had, right. as insane and, and, and as many drawbacks as it had, yeah. there was a certain character which was a result, in my opinion, of so many of these characters right. that just were, that's what, New York had yeah. a lot of that stuff. Yeah. And, when and back then, you would not get locked up. Today, you would get locked up. I mean, was, yeah, but that's what, there was, like, like, we'll look back and think yeah. that was, that was yeah. like, I don't know why we think that was. I don't know, but it was what it was. A perfect way to put it was like, back Back then, first of all, for anyone who hadn't been to New York back then, Times Square, obviously, as most people do know, is nothing like it is today. There weren't any, like, you know, cartoon characters, but if there were, it would have been a person doing it because that's how they wanted to express themselves, not because they were trying to get a dollar off of somebody. Right. That is the difference between now and 30 years ago. Anybody's going to talk about the ropes. You certainly can. I mean, from what I understand from, you know, the history of, vel of velvet ropes outside nightclubs, is it more than likely, you know, we didn't start it, but obviously we probably perfected it. But, you know, when we had Giorgio Moroder, who, you know, is having a career renaissance himself now, uh, he did all of Donna Summer's songs. Um, um, but anyway, we, he, you know, he talk, was talking about discos in, in Germany and Italy in the, in the late 60s and early 70s, you know, doing, you know, having, you know, you know, there was a rope, having ropes then, and certainly Regine had ropes at her discos in Paris, no question about that, but it didn't, you know, we probably popular, popularized it in the United States, and certainly, certainly, you know, in New York, and using the rope not as crowd control as much as an access denier. After a little while, we had membership cards, and those were, those were a disaster. They didn't really work out. <laughs> you know, and we just used to give people back money all the time. You know, it was $75. Can you imagine that? A friend of mine said, $75, yeah, the best $75 I ever spent. Except, except if you couldn't pass muster at the door, you still they didn't mean anything. You know, it's like New Year's Eve, you know, we sold tickets were okay, imagine this fifty dollars to see Grace Jones or Donna Summer. Although they were although they weren't really it was special guest appearance. It really didn't say Grace Jones on it. Um, but even so, okay, so I stand outside, you know, with, with like five thousand, ten thousand and fifties giving people money back, you know, that not letting them in. Wow. Yeah. Everything is being watched so much more today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's just a different time. Yep. Yeah. That's the thing. There were a lot of rules weren't getting broken because yeah. there weren't even the rules weren't yeah. even set yet. But yeah. you know that aren't here now. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know? Steve and, and Ian are two very different guys. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Their partnership uh, is one of legend. Yeah. What have you learned from each one of them that you've been able to um, use? You know, in your life, like have they from, mentored you? Yeah. I mean, in, from as a team, yeah. individually. With Steve, he always pushed me, and I need pushing, meaning in a good way. I mean, people would probably not think this, but he always was on me to try to, to, to choose higher or to try to do things with your life and don't always think about the moment. And in a way, he taught me humility because he was very kind with people, and hopefully he was able to, over my life, finally bring some of that out in myself. With Ian, um, he has taught me to think out of the box. He's taught me that business comes first. I don't know, he taught me that it's good to be smarter than everybody else in the room, even if you're not. <laughs> so. Mark Benneke, is, as he sits here right yeah. now, how much have you... Um, is a direct result from your experience working with those two guys? Probably more, hmm, probably, probably more Steve, um, but uh, you know, it could be PC and say equal, but I think I'm a little kind of more like Steve and Ian. Um, I wish I was a little more like Ian, but you know, so which means is I'm probably not, not as tough in business as I should be. Right. What is your New York? My New York? Yeah. My New York wishes that uh, when you look up 
down South on Park Avenue that still says Pan Am instead of MetLife. <laughs> That's my New York. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> a brasserie would be open 24 hours instead of closing. I don't mind that they change the interior inside, but that it would still be open. The doors open. Right. Going to hockey games, though, that's still a constant, you know, or, you know, that's part of the range. It was, you know, that's changed still, so dramatically yeah, from yeah, the old well, blue seats oh, to please, now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Knowing that once you get off that turn on the FDR drive going into Queens that you're going on an adventure somewhere, that, that always has kind of stayed the same, whether you're going to LaGuardia or, you know, JFK. Yeah, yeah. Coming back to the city from a long weekend even, <laughs> you know, maybe out in the Hamptons and then you've had a nice time, but you're still happy to be coming back even though the city has changed so much. I mean, I've had people on the show, and I'll be honest about this, I've had people on the show who have no idea who I am. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so how I'm like, how did you? Yeah, well, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so I found that that's another interesting thing I've learned from the show. Yeah. You know, there was a much more active back door than, uh, <laughs> than, uh, than I was led on to. So, yeah, uh, but that's, that's, that's good in a way. That's you know. have a cause. Yeah, that's why I have Myra. <laughs> that's why I thank God for Myra, because, yeah. yeah. I mean, Myra has really made the show click, because, you know, without her, I mean, it was, you know. No, she's amazing. Yeah, Myra. it really wouldn't, yeah, you know, it just wouldn't, wouldn't work the way, it, the way it has, you know. Right. That's, okay, so um, the Mark and Myra show. Right. It's on uh, 10 o'clock Sunday nights on Sirius XM, uh, Channel 54, of course. And um, it gets replayed on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Friday nights at, at various times. <laughs> so if you really like the channel, if you like the old school disco music, and we're beginning to play a little new music too, uh, tune in. I can't thank you enough, Mark. Oh, thanks, Scott. Your, your style and, um, you know, just the way, you know, the way you've handled all of this, since then, it's, it's mm. very intriguing to me. I was uh -huh. dying to talk to you about it. And I've never been in a position I've been yeah. comfortable enough to talk to. I would think coming up to you that this is the one thing he doesn't want to talk about because <laughs> everybody wants to know something. So to have a format just to be able to do yeah. that, it's, it's a thrill for me. Well, great. So I'm glad we were enough. able to do it. Yeah. Continue success. Well, with thank your you. Show Thanks, Scott. And, thank uh, you. Absolutely. Pass it on. Again, again. All right. No problem, buddy. No problem. You got thank it. You.